Is it time to leave Google Recaptcha for good and try another anti-spam service? Well, I had my doubts recently and I'm going to share my three thoughts on why leaving Google Recaptcha could be a good idea. Hi, I'm Victor at Vimundo.com and I'm a big fan of Google and a long time user. I use their services like Chrome and Gmail and Drive and such on a daily basis. And I've also been an advocate of Google Recaptcha. I think it's the biggest anti-spam service in the world. And it's not hard to see why. It's free. It's from a trusted company like Google. And it's really easy to use with most WordPress plugins and themes like DV form contact module, for example, you just have to get the API key and uh, click save and that's it. Also the old versions of reCAPTCHA like one and two, where you have to solve puzzles and say that this is a boat and this is a car. Those riddles are gone in Google reCAPTCHA version three, and it's kind of an invisible spam service, even if we get into that later. So there are lots of reasons for choosing Google reCAPTCHA, but there has also emerged a few reasons why not to use Google reCAPTCHA. So the first reason for removing Google reCAPTCHA is about GDPR. And I know that lots of people are tired of hearing about this, but it's a reality. GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation, and it's an European Union law. And if you are not compliant, you can get a heavy fine. It could be up to 2% of the firm's worldwide annual revenue. So you better keep track if your website is GDPR compliant or not. Is Google reCAPTCHA GDPR compliant? Well, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not going to give you legal advice. But let me say this much. It's not crystal clear. So the problem actually starts with Google Fonts, and I will explain why this is relevant for Google reCAPTCHA. But first, let's go back to January in 2022, when a German court ruled that Google Fonts is not in compliance with GDPR. And the reason is that Google collects IP data from the visitors when the fonts are called from the Google server. In this case, the website owner got away with a hundred euros fine, but the court warned that there could be much higher stakes next time. So what's the connection between Google Fonts and Google reCAPTCHA? Well, when you add the Google reCAPTCHA script to your website, it will force the visitor to load the font Roboto, and that's a Google font, from the Google server to be more precise from the server fonts.gstatic.com. Com. So that means that the user makes a call to the Google server and reads the Google fonts, which could be a problem for GDPR, obviously. And there is no way to turn this off, neither in the settings in the Google reCAPTCHA console or by using scripts, because this is embedded from an external source. So you cannot turn this off and neither can your visitors. The second reason for leaving reCAPTCHA is about page speed because reCAPTCHA can make your page load slower because it adds lots of external calls. And uh, the irony in this is that Google have pushed page speed as a really fundamental factor in SEO when they released the Web Core Vitals update. And at the same time, they are contributing to adding bloat to your website. The Robota fonts mentioned before, they account for 30 kilobytes of extra bloat loading on your website for every visitor and I would say it's completely unnecessary but it's impossible to remove but it's not just those two fonts that are added using the chrome inspector tool or, or a site like gtmetrics.com you can find all calls that are connected to reCAPTCHA so I just tested a regular DV website using reCAPTCHA version 3 in a contact form and in addition to the two fonts that are called there are 10 more calls and they account for about 400 kilobytes and that's a lot and if you're not familiar with kilobytes you can compare it to pretty high resolution full screen image so to sum it up reCAPTCHA can be bad for your page speed and that means bad for your seo and your user experience 
So the third and last reason for leaving Google reCAPTCHA is the clutter that it adds to your website layout. You've probably seen this little reCAPTCHA badge in the bottom right corner that is added when you add the reCAPTCHA script to your website. And if you hover it, you have links to the Google privacy policy and terms of use. And this is blue and it has a shadow and that might not at all fit into your web design concept. Also, it might conflict with uh, like a call to action or something else in your bottom right corner. It could be overlapped by this reCAPTCHA badge. And there are zero settings for styling this in the Google reCAPTCHA dashboard. If you want to change the look of it, you have to do it with custom CSS. And it's not easy to know exactly what's allowed and not allowed. Is it allowed to make it smaller? to change the colors, to move it around. In the Google FAQ, it stated that you can actually hide the reCAPTCHA by using CSS, but, and there is a but, it says that you are allowed to hide the badge as long as you include the reCAPTCHA branding visibility in the user flow. And you have to include a specific text with links to the privacy policy and the terms of use. So calling reCAPTCHA invisible spam protection is not really correct because it's visible in one way or another. So to sum it up, there are several advantages to using Google reCAPTCHA, but there are also several disadvantages. So one obvious advantage is that it is completely free. You don't have to pay any license fee. It's supported by most WordPress form plugins and themes like Divi. You can also analyze spam analytics data in the reCAPTCHA dashboard. And Google, of course, has a huge amount of data to pinpoint both human spammers and spam bots. But then we have the disadvantages. The first one is that it might not be GDPR compliant. It tracks user behavior data, which could be used by Google. It adds bloat to your website, which could reduce your page speed and hurt your SEO and user experience. And it adds design elements that might conflict with elements and the layout of your website. Okay, so what about alternatives to reCAPTCHA? Well, there are several, and I'm going to share two favorites, and then one extra one if you are on a slim budget and want a quick solution. The first one is called WP Armor Honeypot Spam Protection. And this is a really clever technique. It adds a hidden field that only spam bots can see in your forms. And when the spam bot adds some text in this hidden field and try to submit it, the message is blocked by the plugin. And it's also plug and play, so you just have to download the plugin and activate it and it's up and running. There is a free version of WP Armor in the WordPress plugin repository. And that actually covers a lot of the major WordPress forms like the Divi contact form, WP comments, WP registration, contact form 7, gravity forms, at least the non-Ajax and single page forms, as well as BBPress forums, Elementor forms and gravity forms, plus more. Then we have the paid version of WP Armor called WP Armor Extended. And this one adds a two level spam check. So it's more solid. You have IP blocking and spam logs. So you can actually see all the spam messages and also find messages that might be caught by mistake. It also adds support for WooCommerce checkout and WooCommerce registration, Ninja forms, gravity forms, with the Ajax based forms and the multi step forms, BodyPress, easy digital downloads, and more. WP Armor offers lifetime licenses and it starts at $19.99 US dollars for a single site. And their unlimited lifetime license for unlimited websites is $99.99 US dollars. But you can actually find some discounts on divimundo.com. Com, so make sure to check that out in the blog post. It's linked in the video description if you are on YouTube watching this. Another solid choice for spam protection is clean talk. And if you check out the different WordPress forums where people are asking for spam protection, I see lots of people praising this service. If WP Armor is like a baseball bat against the spammers, Clean Talk is like a tank. It's massive and it has a long, long list of advanced features.
I can't go through the entire feature list here because the video would be very, very long, but you can check out their website for more details. There is a free WordPress plugin, but you have to sign up for the CleanTalk service on their website in order to use it. So you have a seven day free trial period. After that, the license starts at $12 per year for one website and it goes up to $20 per month for unlimited website usage. So it's still a really fair price for what you get. And the same thing as before, there are some discounts available on divimundo.com in the blog post. So make sure to check that out. The last alternative to Google Recaptcha is the default Divi contact form spam protection. And I know it's old school and it's far from perfect, but if you have a really small website or a project with a slim budget, it might just be good enough. And it can also be combined with WP Armor or CleanTalk if you want to add an extra layer of protection. So what it does is to add a little box to the left of the submit button with a small mathematical task like three plus seven is, and the visitor has to do the math. That's all for today. Please let me know your opinion in the comments below. Do you keep on with Google Recaptcha or do you think it's time to get rid of it and use an alternative? And if so, which one do you prefer? Thank you for watching.